Greetings all, Last Outrider here with another Answer 2 video. This time, I've been looking at some videos out there about what would life be like in 40k. Night for a normal person. If you were living somewhere in the Warhammer universe, what would your daily life be like? And I've watched these videos, like in One Mind Syndicate, which, and others, and... Uh, I think what they put on the wiki is more of what the exceptional life would be like. We really think about life in the 40k. The first per thing that comes to people's minds are probably hive cities. And hive cities came from the Judge Dredd universe. Mega City 1, Mega City 2, Brit Sit, everything like that. But, if you read the lore, there's about two million worlds in the Warhammer universe. And of those two million worlds, there's only about 37,000 hive worlds. What does that mean? That means the average person does not live on a hive world. Less than one-tenth of one percent of the 40k population lives on a hive world. So, not exactly normal. What would your life be? To be quite honest, it would probably be exactly the same the way it is now. The majority of the worlds in 40k are industrial worlds, somewhere in the range of about a 250 year technology range of what we have now. So that means spanning from like 150 years ago to 150 years from 2018. That's where the majority of the worlds in the Imperium sit. So, your life would probably be pretty much the way it is now. There would be some big differences, and that's what I'm going to go into this video, because I have not seen them mentioned in any other video. So here is your special part. One, the Ecclesiarchy. Now, many people think that the Warhammer 40k universe is a very dogmatic religious society. And that's being lorded over by the Ecclesiarchy. But if you look at the history of the Ecclesiarchy, that's not its purpose. In reality, the religions on a 40k planet would probably be about as diverse as what they are today. The difference is, is that all of them would have to be emperor-centered. But how the religion is structured, there's really no rules to that. So, if you want the god-emperor to be a Buddha-like figure, uh, you'd probably have Buddhism only in Instead, you'd have the emperor being Buddha. You want to have any form of Protestantism, Catholicism, Muslims, Islam, Jainism, Sikhism, whatever it is. It would pretty much still be the same format of whatever those religions are. It's just that the central character in all of them would be the Emperor and Primarchs. And that's the key point. That's what the Ecclesiarchy does. It keeps track. And there was a time when all of these different cults of the Emperor started to come out and they started to fight with each other. And then the Ecclesiarchy was born to basically stop religious hostilities. They basically... Uh, imagine if there was 
in this world today if they had the balls to create a ministry of religion. And basically this was a bunch of people that sat down and looked at different and just stopped different religious sects from fighting with each other. And if there was any religious sect that was just really stupid or harmful or, or too fractional, they would just say, you guys can't exist. Go away. It's just harmful. Uh, that's what the ecclesiarchy does. So there isn't one uh, imperial 40k religion. There's, there's, kind of, there, there's many different flavors of it. It's just all emperor-based. Uh, um, hell, the, you even have the emperor as the omnissiah. So if you want to go with science and everything like that, then the emperor is the scientist supreme. Any way you look at it, in all the different s religion spectrum, as long as the emperor is the center of it, the ecclesiarchy will say it's okay. But if you start going and creating something that is not emperor-centered, some cult of personality or anything like that, or if you create what uh, a doctrine or other cult or fringe religious group that is not helpful to society, then you're you're going to bump into the sisters of battle and and others who are just going to come in and shut that down. So, but the key role of the ecclesiarchy is from stopping all of these different uh, cults of the emperor or religions of the emperor from fighting with each other. That's their main purpose. The ecclesiarchy makes sure everybody gets along. There is no religious prosecution. No one group of the emperor can prosecute another, group, another religious group of the emperor or say their idea is over their idea. Anytime that happens, the ecclesiarchy comes in and shuts it down. If there's any interreligion fighting, they stop it. Which you might ask, wow, our world today could really use an organization that does that. So that's an improvement. Another improvement you might think is, they keep on saying, in the grim darkness of the far future there is only war. Yes. But it's not war as we think of it today. In other words, well, we know what it is. But there is no interplanetary war. There is no chance on an imperial world that some political entity called a country is going to go at war with another political entity called a country. And these two countries have sovereignty over their little circle on a map that they call their own with their own citizens or people. That doesn't exist in 40k. There are no countries. Every imperial planet is a imperial planet. So from that standpoint, there is no war in 40k. Which again, you might say, wow, why don't we have an organization that can do that today as well? So there's no religious fighting. There's no war the way we think of war. Um, there's no gross profiteering. Okay. Um, in other words, if any organization, corporation, individual, or planet started to stray away from pulling its weight for the Imperium and just starts looking after itself, then there's a little organization called Ordo Hereticus of the Inquisition that's looking for exactly those people. So let's have an example. Let's say we're in a, an imperial planet and suddenly the banking structure or corporate structure on it starts, I don't know, orchestrates a housing market crash um, so that a few people could line their pockets with a couple billion dollars. That's the exact type of thing which would get the attention of Ordo Hereticus.
and the heads of those organizations would suddenly meet a bolt around to the head by an inquisitor or an interrogator walking into the office and saying, you've been judged heretical and blah, 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 and boom, your life is over. Those institutions would be turned over to somebody who did run them the way they were supposed to be run. So, what does that come mean? That means the one other thing you're going to find in a 40K world is that there are people who are fanatically dedicated to doing a good job in the government. Yes, there's a lot of crap in the government, but at the very top you can be sure that there are people who have the power, the authority, and the will to correct problems if they just go too far. Which would be another good thing that you could sit there and say. So you put all of these things together. You also, of course, have technology. Like we might be sitting in a world, industrial world today, where technology of what it is at 2018, but we know there are higher uh, uh, technological states out there. So, and we know that all of the worlds have a um, imperial schools, right? So we know that worlds will be paving t paying tithes. We know that the worlds are given a development plan. Okay, so if the imper if the if this if Earth suddenly became an imperial world, it would be classified, it would be given a development plan, and it would be given basically a 100 year, 500 year development plan to pull it up to the standard uh, technology in, in, in the world. Yes, there are a lot of worlds that have problems like agri world, uh, not agri worlds, but you know mining worlds and hive worlds, but those are the, uh, the, the tiny minority. If you have a world that's pretty much savable, the Imperium gives it a good development plan. You know, the Imperium doesn't go out of its way to destroy the environment on planets. It pretty much only does that, did that on planets which already destroyed themselves by the time <laughs> uh, they, they bumped into the Imperium. So, so overall, Probably life in 40K would be better than what you're experiencing today. I mean, these, these inter-imperium agencies like the Arbites, or the uh, Astra Militarum, or the Adepta Mechanicus, or, hell, even Astartes recruiting, uh, is still going on, on on pretty much all imperial worlds. So if you wanted to get off whatever planet you're on and see, I guess, the horrors that are really out there galaxy-wide, there are a lot of people, billions of people, that are doing that all over the Imperium all the time as well. So, the grimdark of 40k really doesn't exist in the standard everyday life it exists on a larger context. It exists like, you know, Astartes fighting chaos. Uh, it exists, well, war is hell, so it exists as an imperial regiment, uh, you know, in a, in a battle zone somewhere. It obviously exists in these hellish structures known as, as hive cities and, and, and things like that. But for the common person living there, it's probably better than what you're seeing today on Earth. And one last point. The Adeptus Mechanicum, and I'll make another video on it later, but what would be like life like on a forge world? Because I didn't mention those. If you read the Adeptus Mechanicum Codex, you see that one of the first things they do is... Basically, the Mechanicum would prefer uh, people serve them to be happy than they would to be unhappy. So the first implants 
that pretty much all adepts get are stimulating the, the happy and pleasure centers of the brain. The arcoflagellants um, are an example of this. A and even the servitors. They all, the first thing they get is these positive reinforcers for um, following the, the, the Amnesia. The, the Skitari as they march on the ground. They are all constantly being bombarded with the pleasure centers of their brain being hyped up when they follow the Omnissiah um, and the Credo. So these aren't people being exploited and impressed and, uh, blah, blah. how can I say, tormented into doing their jobs. If you lived on a forge world, the, the easiest thing for the Mechanicum to do would just find some way to keep everybody happy and efficient. And if all they needed to do was just stick a little implant in your brain that says today these are our work quotas that we need to achieve today. And you are going to get an orgasmic jolt of pleasure when you reach them and the closer you get to it. That would be so much easier to motivate people without any type of law enforcement or goon squad than it would be to try to bully people into achieving these goals. The Imperium knows this. So when given a choice between negative reinforcement and autocratic punishment and positive reinforcement just by giving you some type of happy implant, Mechanicus chooses that. That's how it works most of the time. So even in those hellish environments, people are probably, almost definitely, happy because they can make you happy. Just a thought. Until next time, bye. Hmm.